It's, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, um, but we should always be uh, uh, trying to grow in, in, in the Word, and, and, and it doesn't matter, and that's why, you know, uh, uh, I hope that, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that we all are doing that, uh, studying the Word, getting in the Word, and, and, and I like what you said, too, I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of our differences that we have is just terminology, yeah. And um, and so so uh, I I really hope that uh, again that you know uh, uh, mentioned something about uh, 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 that it's true at my house too I think you mentioned something about uh, uh, somebody was too heavenly minded to be any earthly good mm -hmm. my wife uses that on me she only uses half of it though <laughs> um, no, I can't remember which half it was maybe no earthly good but uh, uh, but but I want you to know that I've uh, uh, I have a lot of respect for the brothers that have come, and and I hope that you'll pray for me just for a little Reminded bit. Um, the Bible teaches us, friends, that we are, uh, as you've heard, saved by the grace of God. That's right. It's not by our works. It's not by anything that we do. And I know that's uh, we've heard that and we've heard it, but do you really understand what that means? Uh, because we still, I, I find that too often... Uh, that, that we think that, boy, if we do this one wrong thing, well, we'll go to hell. Or, or I've got to do this in order to get in. And, 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 and we need to realize, friends, that, that if your name has been enrolled in that Lamb's book of life, then you're, you're heaven bought and heaven bound. That doesn't give you a license then to go back if, to, to, to live certain ways or whatever. You have a responsibility. And that responsibility, friends, is to be a great light. Uh, uh, to your family, to the people around you. And I think a lot of times we, we look to this one or that one and, and, and that's all and we just go on about our daily life. And, and, and so I hope that, uh, uh, again, the Lord will allow me to just say just a few things. And, and I believe, Brother Jamie, you said uh, about uh, going home and I, you, you mentioned it too. Go, going home. You know, I like to get up early uh, in the morning and I like to get ready and I like to get to work. I, I'm, I'm not a workaholic like these two profess to be, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I like to get to work, and I like to get the work done. And then, you know what? As good, if you put in a good, good solid day of work, there's no better feeling in my uh, experience than going home. That's the way I find it. And if you think about it in your daily uh, look, uh, life, it's just whenever it starts getting ready and you put in that day and there's really not a lot going on, boy, for some reason, there's nothing like going home. And that's what we're doing here today. Well, we're working for the Lord. We're doing the work that is put before us. And, and I'm hoping that you're having a good time doing it. I know I sure am. I, I'm having the time of my life. But you know what? There's going to come a time uh, that I'm going to be looking uh, for it to be home time, maybe at the school or however you want to phrase it. There's a time whenever I want to go home. And friends, when that time comes, uh, I think it's going to be uh, absolutely the, uh, the best uh, experience that I could ever possibly imagine as you've mentioned eyes have not seen uh, nor ears have heard what great things the Lord has prepared for us. It goes on to teach us uh, uh, that it has been revealed. You know, I have, it is a revealing spirit. And so uh, whenever I get carried away just a little bit, uh, I get a little glimpse. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned about uh, the Apostle Paul being uh, uh, friends lifted up into that third heaven and saw things uh, that uh, he just was not supposed to see. Uh, the Lord blessed him to see it. Uh, but he, he, he told him uh, certain things he couldn't speak about. Uh, you, and you mentioned it in Revelations too about uh, John being called up and saw things. Uh, and friends, he was trying uh, to explain what all he knew uh, uh, using things of his day to explain what he had seen. Uh, uh, but you know what? He was told uh, not to write about certain things. Uh, friend, that's why it always uh, uh, tickles me when people start talking about this, about the end time. You know, we don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, what I'm going to say is this. Uh, friends, he can come at any moment. Uh, you better be ready. Uh, you can take your last breath at any moment. Uh, so you better be ready. Uh, it's not uh, if he's coming back. Uh, it's when he's coming back. It's not if uh, you give up your last breath. It's when you give up your last breath. And I promise you this. Uh, friends, I've had 
absolutely the best time I could ever possibly imagine after I became a Christian, after the Lord came into my life. Friends, I wouldn't go back to the things I used to do, to the person that I was. Friends, listen, I give it all to God. I give all Him all the glory because, friends, He made me a new creature. I didn't do it myself. And friends, what He has awaiting on us uh, that have been born again. And friends, I do believe in a conversion. Uh, we've talked about, uh, I believe, a, a, a travail and this and that. Listen, I believe in a conviction. I believe there is a conviction. And I believe there is a conversion. Now, I'm not going to go anywhere, however it takes you. Uh, that's between you and the Lord. I know that, that God has to convict you. Uh, friends, the Holy Spirit has to convict you at some point. I can't convict you. Uh, we can't get up here. We can't convict nobody. Oh, we can try, and I believe people try that sometimes. Uh, uh, they try to make it so hard, and they try to pound it in the ground to you, and they try to uh, uh, say this or say that to try to hurt you. And this, uh, Listen, uh, uh, friends, I find that this is good news. I want to tell you the good news of Jesus. He took all the hurt for you. Uh, friends, it says by his stripes we are healed. Uh, friends, he was the one that lived the life that we couldn't live. He's the one that marched up Calvary. He's the one that was nailed to a tree. He's the one, friends, that, that took your place. You talk, Somebody talked about the blood being shed back in the garden. I believe it was brother, uh, maybe Brother Gary or one of you. I don't know. Uh, but listen, uh, God did. He took an animal and he covered the sins, didn't he? Uh, of, the, of Adam and Eve there. Uh, that was the covering. Uh, you know what the covering is today? It's the blood of Jesus. You either have it applied or you are lost. I don't care what the world says about you. I don't care what the preacher gets up and tries to preach you into heaven. Uh, friend, we can't preach you in. We can't preach you out. All we can do is tell you of the good news of Jesus. What He's done for you. And so today I want you, uh, friends, to realize that uh, I will get up. Now listen, I believe church is a great place to believe me. I believe that whenever a, a preacher is anointed, he'll say some things. I believe that the Lord will uh, bless those words. Uh, but friends, that conviction has to come from the Holy Spirit. And when it is, you better take heed to it. I can remember when the Lord convicted me. He let me understood. You, you put it in a phrase of getting in trouble over your sin. I knew what I was. I came to the understanding of what I had done, where I was, and where I was going. Until then, I didn't have a thought of it. Uh, you know what, I, I hear people uh, all the time and again, it's the terminology thing. People say, well, I know I'm going to heaven, and you know you're going to hell. You know you're a sinner. Well, listen, I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't have any thought, any mind, any anything. I thought I was just as good as anybody else. But when the Lord convicted me, then I had some knowledge about me at that point. I realized I was able to see with eyes I'd never seen with before. And I had come to the understanding of what I truly was. And you know what? Uh, silly me, I tried to get good enough. I tried to clean myself up. I tried to make myself look presentable. Uh, but friends, it didn't work. It wasn't until I come to the point. You mentioned the end of works and that's when God worked. There come a point of uh, friends that I, I just gave up on myself. Now that's me. I was the one that done that. And we say we're saved by grace, not by, not by works. I tried to work it out. I failed. I'm telling you, you don't have to. You can surrender. You can surrender it all to Christ. You, you, can, you can come to that understanding when the Lord convicts you. There is a conversion. And friends, only the Spirit of God can do that too. That's right. See, it's all Jesus. It's all the Holy Spirit. Our job is just to come to that understanding. And we're all called to be witnesses. Every single one of us. The Bible teaches it like this. In John chapter 3 it tells us that. He says that uh, light came into the world. Not to, not to condemn the world. But that the world, but that the world through him. him might be saved. It said that we were already condemned brother William. Why was we already condemned? 
Because we failed to do something, right? What did we fail to do? To believe. And, and, and I had to go and, and I wanted to see where this was. I, I snuck back there because this, uh, you brothers was preaching this and it was on my mind. And I had to find out where it was. And, uh, but if you go into 1 Corinthians, it says, For after that, the wisdom of God, the world uh, by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. I like what the brother Willie spent on this. It's not foolish preaching. It's the foolishness of preaching. You see, again, we don't get up here. We don't convict. We don't get up here. We don't. You can be convicted uh, through a, a preacher can preach something that can convict you. The Spirit can bless those words. You can be convicted by a song. I, I, I'm not going to limit what God can do. You can be convicted while you're by yourself, which is the case with me. I was alone, just, just me, when the Holy Spirit paid me a visit. So you see, he will do the convicting. I believe a church is a good place to go after that. You, 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 you might could, could hear something. But it says, God chose by the foolishness of preaching not to save them that would believe, not to save them that can believe or will or whatever. It's to save them that believe. You see, we're condemned because we don't believe. When it comes to the point, friends, uh, uh, when you're convicted, you can either push it away or you can become a believer. And when you start believing, putting your faith, not in yourself, and listen again, what I did, and I'm just saying, I'm not preaching. You don't do it the way I've done it. Do it the way the book teaches. Uh, uh, believe, surrender, repent, be born again. That's the way it needs to be. Uh, whenever I was convicted, I did not give up on myself. I did not fully believe in what Jesus done on the cross. Oh, I knew he done it, but I didn't trust it completely. I still wanted to trust in my own works. You see, I tried to work it out, Brother Gary. I, I tried to thought that my work was just as good. You see, a lot of people think that what I can, what I can bring to the table... You see, oh, all I need to do, uh, Brother Stephen, is quit all this foolishness, quit all of this bad stuff, and bring my good stuff to the Lord, and then I'll be saved. The problem with that is, is you have absolutely no good stuff to bring. I know we think we do. I hear it all the time. I'm just as good as this one. I've done this. I've done that. I, 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 I. Well, I needed to give it all up. I needed to surrender it all. I needed to say, Lord, I can't, but you can. Here it is. And when you come to that spot, I call it broken. I call it ground zero. Absolutely nothing. You see, I, again, I've said this many times, uh, 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 Brother Stephen and uh, Brother Jamie, I believe that people think that they're, they're cracked, they're not broken. And as long as you think you're cracked, you can fix yourself. You can't. You're broken. You have nothing to fix yourself with. Not even duct tape can work on this. Okay? It can do a lot, but it can't do this. You see, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He'll do the convicting. He'll do the conversion. And he'll do all the work in between. You have nothing to boast of, as I have nothing to boast of. I am here doing this right now because the Lord burdened me for this, if I can say that. He put it on me so strong, I tried to run from it, but I could find no peace. Friends, today, I pray that the Lord is working with you about something. If you're saved and you're a born-again Christian, maybe the Lord's put it on you to do something. You can run from it if you want to, but you can't outrun the Lord. You want peace. You better be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice, according to the Scripture. You have a responsibility in this. You must believe. You must believe with everything in you. You must turn it all over to Christ. He'll do the drawing, he'll convict you, and he'll do the saving. But you must put complete trust in him. And what he has already done on Calvary, he done it for you. He did all the works. 
That's why when he hung there, he said, it is finished. You can't add anything to it. Do you want to be saved? Do you want newness of life? Or are you happy the way you are? Listen, friends. <coughs> talked about uh, uh, so uh, Solomon, I guess. Uh, being, and he was. But had, had so much. Everything. Had so, you know, I, I, I believe Noah was probably the richest man in the world at one point. Because <laughs> he had it all, didn't he? <laughs> he was on, he, he, he on the whole earth. Solomon, the wisest, and yeah, had everything that he could. You know what? They're gone now. None of that means anything to them. No. I, I believe I read, and I don't know if this is accurate or not. Somebody told me that, that maybe here before long they're going to try to unfreeze Walt Disney. See how, see how that works out? Listen, friends, when you give up the ghost here, the only thing that matters is your relationship Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says this, and, I'm, and then you come. If you were to gain the whole world, again, you go back. You look at all the richest people in the world. Bring it all the way down. At some point, they give it all up. It does them absolutely no good at this point. The Bible says that if you were to gain the whole world but lose your soul, what would you give in exchange? Brother Gary has said many times, you've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. No. I may do that one. I may just, just for fun. But it ain't going to work. It ain't going to be any good. You can't take it with you. I love you. God loves you so much that he died for you so that you could have something you don't deserve, you don't earn, you can't buy. And he's offering it to you. And you have to accept it through faith, not by works, but through faith in what he's already done for you. He'll do the convicting. He'll do the conversion. He'll make you a new creature. He'll enroll your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your job is to trust him. And then be up about his business. God loves you. God bless you.